Good evening, everybody. Um, my question is uh, about the US elections, a uh, very sort of contemporary thing this year. Is Trump support less than portrayed? Are there a whole block of rusted on Republicans who won't vote for Trump for reasons such as the abortion changes, his attack on democracy on the 6th of January, Ukraine and other antics? Is this block large enough to keep him out of office? Stephanie. So there are some Republicans who are what they call never Trumpers. They voted for him once and they have vowed that they will not do it again. Some are turning to uh, RFK Jr. as an alternative to Donald Trump. Uh, I think with women, there is something uh, possibly stronger when you say, are we underestimating or overestimating the appeal of Donald Trump? The abortion issue really does resonate with women, including Republican women. And I know some of them, and I know some of them for whom this issue uh, is pushing them into the Joe Biden camp. So at the end of the day, you know, our political system is so complicated, the Electoral College and mm. I mean, it really isn't a two-way race. It really is uh, this third-party candidate, uh, RFK Jr., is polling anywhere between 20 and 30 percent, depending on the poll that you look at. So any anything can happen, really. And it, I think it largely comes down to um, how many votes RFK Jr. is pulling from Trump versus Biden. And the way the Electoral College works, and we've got a handful of swing states nine really important swing states. The last poll that I saw had Donald Trump leading in eight of the nine. So, anything? Are you really worried that, that um, Donald Trump will win the next election? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. How worried? Very worried. And Very do you worried. think Joe Biden's the right one to take him on? Well, he's our candidate. I mean, he is the <laughs> candidate to take him on. What so, an, Do you think he can beat him? I, I, I think he can beat him, but again, it, com it comes down to this weird interplay between the, th the three leading candidates and the Electoral College and how you get out the vote in these key... And it comes down to precincts. I mean, Hillary Clinton lost by 83,000 votes. It's, it's narrow, narrow mm -hmm. margins, and it becomes, you know, who's got the savviest get-out-the-vote team and works those precincts and figures out at the, uh, you know, at the last moment how the votes are going to stack. You've lived in the US. Do you, what, what do you think of this third candidate business? I lived in California. I didn't live in the US. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never went actually into real America. <laughs> Different country. Um, look, I, I don't. Uh, I, I don't. I have to say, I'm not sufficiently informed really about R RFK's campaign. But uh, it's pretty obvious uh, that uh, a younger Democratic candidate would have been a very good idea because uh, I think Trump wouldn't be in, in such a strong position if, if, they, if the Democratic Party had been prepared to... and President Biden had been able to make the right decision for the country. Giannis? I think he's completely indeterminate. It's impossible to predict. Uh, and sometimes it's important to be able to, you know, confess that we don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's good to yeah. say that you don't actually don't know. know. You can't predict the future. Right. What I do suspect is that Biden has lost more of his core youth vote because of Gaza compared to the Republicans that Trump has lost due to abortion. I'm not happy about this. I'm simply stating it as a... Observation. Est estimation. But what I find interesting is that, on the one hand, if you take these issues, you have uh, Joe Biden, who is uh, focusing on Trump's misogyny, on ab abortion, on uh, um, these cultural issues, which are essential to civilized people, in order not to discuss the crushing reality that mm -hmm. both white and black working class people have minuscule income and zero wealth. And that creates a lot of discontent. At the same time, Trump is addressing these people in a way that Biden cannot, because he is so close to Wall Street, so close to the elites. Trump is better at addressing the have-nots in order to usurp their vote and, once in the White House, do what he did the last time, give everything to Wall Street and tax cuts to the super-rich. 
I think that is the conundrum of the United States. And I think we should all be very happy that in Australia we have compulsory voting. Mm. Because, mm. because at least, you know, you know that everybody's going to vote. Whereas in the United States, yeah. it's a question of who is going to abstain with greater probability. Mm. Mm.